Well guys, it's that time again, a brand new Escape from Tarkov patch was just released this week and I'm going to give you guys my impressions of the patch so far. Um, I have a very limited gameplay though, probably under 15 hours currently on the new patch, uh, but I have actually played quite a bit of it and I am enjoying it, but it is actually a lot different than what I can remember from the previous patches. Uh, for the game. So I want to dive into some of the things that I've noticed uh, with the new patch and some things that you might need to be aware of and my overall take on how the game is playing so far. Before I continue though, I just want to let you guys know or, or anybody who is new watching this, Escape from Tarkov is still in closed alpha. So everything that I talk about uh, in this video today is subject to change. The game will most likely not look the same in 12 months down the road and I, I will be critical about certain things because Escape from Tarkov is very expensive, so if you're interested in buying it, then you want to know how the game plays now. And I'm well aware that the desync and the servers and all the other problems will most likely be fixed in the future, but it's still good to touch on them a little bit. So the first thing you'll probably notice with this brand new Escape from Tarkov patch is there's a new trader, which I'm going to be dubbing uh, Peacekeeper Putin. Uh, alongside Christmas Putin, Pusher, now known as Skier, uh, and this trader is purely in American dollars. So yes, you can actually sell items to the Peacekeeper and receive USD, and if you played Escape from Tarkov in the past, then you would know that acquiring a lot of USD or Euros was fairly difficult in the past, and I think that's going to change now and into the future. Another great move that the developers made was allowing us to choose between daytime and nighttime on woods and customs. This has been probably one of the most requested testing features for the developers to add into the game. I don't think in the future that there's going to be two time zones for every single map. I think there's just going to be one universal time and I'm completely okay with that. But Unfortunately, we don't have really any option to play other than using NVGs, which are way too difficult to acquire, especially now, and everything is basically pitch black. But if you like playing in the game in the darkness and uh, you're able to kill the scavs from the muzzle flashes, then you can play nighttime on woods and customs whenever you want. And I know some squads might want to take advantage of that, especially when you acquire NVGs. You might not even get anybody uh, or any other players challenge you in those arenas, which would be pretty cool. Um, so definitely getting back on the woods is awesome. Probably my favorite map right now. They added some th new things as well to the woods. Um, and other maps as well, like finding corpses that are just static corpses that you can search for loot. Uh, they've also added weapon racks, so you can go around and find AK racks uh, and just pick up AKs, like full AKs just sitting there. Uh, it's kind of like, it reminds me a lot of the Daisy mod, whenever you used to be able to see the AK-74 rack, but you weren't able to do anything about that. Well, in Tarkov, you can just grab the gun and go, which is awesome. And if you are... Uh, going to be using the scavenger mode a lot. I highly recommend going and using your scav on the woods and going to the like the train cart cabin. That's where a weapon rack is and that's where you can probably find the AK-74 ends that will be laying there and quickly make an escape. So that's something that I've been utilizing a little bit. Now also something to note when it comes to looting is the gray containers. Uh, the long gun containers and the gray boxes that you used to not be able to loot are now lootable and contain ammunition and weapons. So it's definitely worth checking out. They're just as valuable as the green containers, I believe. So really like that change. You could typically find them in the back of SUVs on the woods. So make sure that you double check those. Another really big feature that the developers have added in this patch is insurance. Now how insurance works is if your item that you've insured has not been picked up by a player or a scavenger player, then there is a chance that you'll get that weapon back depending on the reputation status that you have with the trader and who you employ to go and insure your weapons with. So you're not actually able to get your weapon back every single time only with that off chance that nobody touches it at all by the end of the raid. And even if nobody touches the weapon, there is still a chance that you won't get your weapon back. So far, I've insured almost every single weapon, and I have yet to get one back. Maybe that's because I only have level 1 status with the traders, or the RNG is just so low that it makes it balanced. 
I like how the insurance is in the game. Uh, originally, I didn't like the idea, but after actually seeing how well it's been implemented, the cost of actually insuring your gear and the chance that you're going to be able to get it back, especially with scavenger mode, there's going to be a lot of players running over your corpse, so you're going to have to get damn lucky if nobody touches your stuff. Uh, if that is the case, uh, then, uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. So far, I haven't had any issues, but some people are complaining about it. But let me know what you guys think of the insurance system in the uh, comments below. I'm eager to see what you guys have to say. Now, let's talk a little bit about the scavengers. Scavs can now sprint running around, which sprinting has a brand new animation for knives and running with pistols. And it feels great, so that's an awesome change. Uh, but scavengers can also throw concussion grenades um, or just grenades seem to cause your ears to start to ring and shake the entire environment around you a lot different than it was before. I don't know if the stun nades are in the game, but it certainly feels like flashbangs are, are cracking off all the time. So it remains to be seen. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comment section whether or not the stun grenades are in the game or that's just a new effect for the grenades. Uh, the scavengers can also switch firing modes. So they're never going to just shoot you at an equal like semi-automatic rate uh, like they did before which you could easily tell if the gunshots off in a distance was a scav in comparison to a player now that's not necessarily the case and i really like the change there but they are very difficult man running into a scavenger with an ak-74n on full auto and you're not prepared it's going to kick your ass. So you're going to have to run for cover, a lot more cover than you used to have to run for. Um, and I would say when you're sprinting from left to right in front of a scavenger, uh, it, it, it's very difficult for them to hit you. So if you are getting attacked by a scav uh, and you want to try to survive, make sure you start sprinting like in a, in a horizontal pattern away from the scavenger. Um, and that should help you survive for a little bit longer, especially if you don't have any armor. On my first day of the patch, I was getting my ass kicked. In two hours, I only escaped once. Yeah, I was rolling with Johnny, Grinch, and Aces. And I don't know what was the major issue. I think maybe meeting up together in a group and getting attacked by the scavengers when we only had pistols on the woods could have done it. But I think it's also because I've been playing a lot of PUBG and DayZ and I haven't been rolling on Tarkov a lot. And this game requires a lot more focus and attention than those other games, believe it or not. Especially in DayZ. DayZ, you can get shot and have a little bit of wiggle room before you go unconscious um, or even take enough damage to die. In Tarkov, you can get shot in the leg and then you're fucked. You're like basically dead. There was a number of times where I almost made escapes with broken legs and another time where I actually did the entire map with a broken leg, which kind of taught me some valuable lessons with this patch, which is to slow down. I'm simply too quick. I run around far too often and I don't walk and check my surroundings as much as I should. And that's my suggestion for you. Make sure that you're walking rather than running, especially uh, on these wood maps when you're a lone wolf. And keep kind of like pivoting around, like moving your mouse and looking behind you uh, on the on the regular basis. Because you never know when somebody is stalking you and trying to get close with a pistol and you might be able to catch them off guard. Um, it seems to be working out for me, but honestly I don't have all the answers when it comes to the gunplay and the strategy at the moment. I can only give you guys uh, what I've experienced so far. Um, there was one run in particular, I was actually able to acquire a suppressed Makarov, and this was amazing. I don't know if they buffed the suppressed Makarov, but it certainly feels like they did. And it feels like when I'm shooting at the scavengers, it actually takes them a little bit to actually acquire target, rather than just straight up start shooting at me, which is nice. And I don't know if all the suppressed weapons function in that manner. And if they do, rolling with a suppressor is huge. It's a big advantage. And I won't—I don't think I can see myself running a serious build without a weapon with a suppressor in the future, um, just on how well that was performing. So very happy with that. Another thing I noticed with the combat is the shotgun damage cutoff. So how far the shotgun will continue to do maximum damage. 
that feels like it's been adjusted a little bit. You can't really kill players at long distance anymore with the shotgun, it seems. So I don't know if that's just because there was a lot of complaints on the forums about that, or the developers themselves felt like it was a little bit too powerful. I, I will admit the shotguns were extremely powerful, and I still think they are very powerful in comparison to other video games out there, but I kind of like that. You know, how many times do we see video games and developers just get the shotgun wrong, and I feel like the Tarkov guys do it justice. And with the introduction to the slugs from last patch, throw an optic on the shotgun, you have a pretty awesome piece of artillery that's able to take out armor pretty easily. So that's kind of cool. So overall, my, my first impressions of the new patch, it has increased the difficulty significantly in Escape from Tarkov, especially when, fight when fighting against scavengers. And that can be frustrating at first, but once you learn to deal with that, it starts to become very rewarding. Uh, I like the new changes to the map with the looting system, I like the new traders, I like that I can actually play on the woods and customs now whenever I want in the daylight which is cool and it's just going to make the game a lot more easier to broadcast and create content for as well because I was one of those unlucky people that for whatever reason whenever I played the damn game it was always nighttime on customs and woods. Okay so no seriously this time the last thing. Uh, customs is still very buggy and desynky. I don't really know what's going on with that map, but I think it's their stress testing map, so just be mindful of that. I would never run a serious gear set that you don't want to lose on customs for the time being. Make sure that you go in the woods with that type of gear or the factory where the performance is actually doing very well. So, customs, a beautiful map but I simply can't play it because I just get killed out of the blue by just random desync all the time, and that can be infuriating. Well guys, I hope you guys found this video uh, enjoyable, uh, informative, or useful. Let me know what you think of the Escape from Tarkov patch in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for some more DayZ, PUBG, and Tarkov here on the channel and on the live stream.